good morning, everyone. We'll start now the, the talk and presentation about uh, Embark uh, 3.1. Uh, the first thing we'll do is to, to actually run the, the Embark demo. Uh, and this will generate the, the Embark demo uh, templates. So I'll, uh, I'll first access that template. Uh, then I'll, in another terminal also, we'll access it. Uh, I'll open Vim. And the first thing that's uh, available now in, in Embark uh, 3.1 3 is that uh, if you just want to compile the contracts, you don't have an option called minus minus contracts. And that will only compile the contracts and no, it will not attempt to, to actually uh, deploy them. Um, and another thing is that uh, as you see, it will start also a blockchain node by itself if you don't have one uh, available uh, and take care of all of that. Now, uh, if we do the embark run, this will start up embark. And uh, again, another difference is that before you would need to run embark blockchain uh, or embark simulator, simulator, you can still do that. Uh, however, uh, Embark will try to connect to a node, and if that node is not available, then it will uh, initially will by itself start a, a blockchain node. It will start an IPFS server or a Swarm server, depending on on the configuration that you have for your particular application. Uh, so now, if I see here the Embark demo, so I can get value. I can set. And now when we do a set, we see that uh, in the Embark log, it's actually uh, intercepting that uh, transaction. It's decoding it. So you know exactly well, what, is the, the, what is the contract that it's actually uh, being called, what is the, the method that's being called, and where's the value, plus the, the transaction hash, and as well as the, the gas values and the block. And again, if I put here another value, say 101, then this will, this will uh, switch to, uh, it will log that 101 as a, the transaction. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is that, so the Embark also added a new syntax. So if I put here Embark storage, what's going to happen is that it's going to say it's not available because it does not exist in the, in the global uh, context. So I can go to uh, here to where that uh, contract is defined. And just like a small trick, I'll just put it in, in the global space just temporarily. Uh, so we can use this uh, in the dev tools. Uh, and I'll do the same for Embark GS. And now this will... Uh, You'll see now there's animation when Embark is actually uh, building and automatically will reload. Now, uh, the syntax usually with Embark GS, uh, with the Web3 GS 1.0 is that you have to do uh, the contract name dot methods dot the method that you actually want to call. Uh, and then you do a dot call or dot send depending if it's a, a constant or if it's something that needs a transaction. So. To do a get, you would do this. Uh, and to do a set, uh, you would do something like um, dot matter dot set, say 10. Then you would do a send because this is actually a transaction that needs to be created. Uh, and that will create the, the transaction. Uh, now with Embark 3.1, the, the syntax that used to be available in the older version of Web3GS, it's also available. So you can just do a get. Uh, and that will be the equivalent to to this to this longer one, and you can also uh, do something that is a transaction, and it will also still work. So uh, uh, Embark will try to figure out if it should be a send or a call, and it, it will automatically uh, do this. If you if you really need, you can still use the old method of the using the methods and specify if it's a set or a call. Uh, the other thing that we added support for is uh, you can see that now 
uh, there's here a message saying, yeah, nice not available in this chain. So Embark, uh, Embark now supports uh, e ENS. Uh, we still don't support in a development chain. That will be in the next version. Uh, it will, Embark will automatically deploy the ENS contracts to, uh, to your development or private chain, so you can also use them and, and test. Uh, for now, in 3.1, uh, we can we can use it by, for example, going to MetaMask, and I'll, I'll just unlock the account, and I'm in the mainnet, so I'll reload the page. And now I can't do something like embark GS names, and then uh, resolve, and let's say Ethereum.at, and that will return the address associated to Ethereum.at. I can also do the, the reverse of that. I can do a lookup for that particular address, uh, and it will return what is the, the, the name associated. In this case, there's an alias here. So if I do uh, Ethereum Foundation, it's actually the same. So it's the same address as, uh, as this. Uh, and yeah, you can do this for mainnet and any of the, the test nets. Uh, so I'll just disable this. Now, other features to include, you can, there's a contract uh, uh, profiler, so, yeah, which uses a, a fuzzer to, to determine the, uh, the gas estimates that are associated to that, uh, to that contract. Uh, so you can see what are the function names, you can see if it's payable, the mutability, uh, if it, uh, what type of inputs does it get, what type of outputs, and as well as the, the gas the gas estimates associated to it. Another way you can visualize contracts is through the embark graph commands. So uh, this command typically, so you can just do say embark graph, and that will compile and determine all the contracts that are related to each other, what are the their dependencies uh, in Anderson's or uh, if if or they use uh, say libraries and that kind of thing, and it will generate generate a, a diagram. And in this case, just one contract so is not terribly uh, useful. But if we go to a project, say like the the with the, the status contracts uh, project, and I say, uh, let's say I want to generate uh, skipping the undeplo undeployed contracts, uh, this will generate a, a much more interesting uh, graph. So open diagram, and you can see that it has the the connections between the the, the graph. Uh, it's it can be a bit noisy if it's because if your contract has a lot of methods and a lot of events. So with Embark 2.1, we added uh, a lot of options to customize this a bit. So you can say, let's say I. Let's say I don't want the functions, I just want to have the, the events. Then I can, uh, I can run the embark graph, but by skipping the functions. And that will generate a much, uh, a much, more, a much smaller graph, a bit easier to, to read. So there you go. And it can also even get rid of the events and, and be even smaller. Uh, another thing that changed is that uh, before to upload the application to Swarm or IPFS, you would do embark upload IPFS. Uh, now that changed, uh, now you, you inspect, instead you'd only specify the environment if it's development or testnet, depending on your configuration. And the configuration itself uh, changed. So, so you have uh, the upload where you actually want to upload your application and, and what is the, the provider, in this case, uh, IPFS. And you, we also have a DAP connection. So we make, we make the, the, the distinction between uh, what, where your application will actually connect to and where you actually want to upload your, your application. And, and this DAP connection works, uh, it's pretty much like what we do in the contracts. So in the contracts, we have that connection, and we put a list of, uh, of uh, connection attempts. So first, we'll try to use a Web3 object if it's available. 
Uh, if not, they will try the, uh, the web sockets on the localhost, and then we'll try the, the RPC on the localhost. So here we can do the same thing. We could actually say, try connect to the localhost. Uh, and then if that's not available, then connect to a, a public gateway. And to upload then, uh, because, the, because it's specified the provider here as uh, IPFS, then I, if I just do up, embark upload, uh, that will up, that will upload to IPFS. So, okay. so uh, another another really nice feature is that now in the contracts, uh, in the contracts, besides specifying the deployment, uh, which which much more granularity, you can also uh, specify accounts. So by default, Embark will use uh, the accounts of the nodes you're connecting to, but you can also specify uh, accounts on the on the config. So in this case, uh, let's say I take this uh, mnemonic, I created this mnemonic. Uh, there's no funds in the lug net for, the, for this, by the way, and uh, and I go now to my crypto and I create to see what are the addresses associated. So I can see it would be. Um, say 0x e71, 0x bf7, and I can also specify the the balance associated for this. And uh, if you're running on on the development chain, then uh, Embark will automatically fund the, the the that particular account with the the balance that you you specified. So now if I go to Embark run. And I'll just let this start. Uh, so now if I, I can do, uh, where's that, yeah. So if I check what are the accounts, so I can see there's two accounts, Xerox uh, E71, which is this account, and Xerox B, F7, which is this account. And checking the balance, if I try to get the balance of, uh, oops, the balance of the first account. And then I look, you can see it's uh, it's five ether. I mean, it's less than five ether because this account was used to, to deploy the contract. So there was some, some ether that was already already spent. And another another thing is that you can specify the the, the deployment and uh, well, so default is something it's a, that applies to all environments, but you know you can the def, you can do the development environment, which is the the environment that is uh, that is run when you do embark run, but you can also specify other like say test nets. Uh, so when you run embark run dot testnet, it will run the configuration that uh, that is here. So you could do something like uh, deployment, uh, and then say something like this. And uh, so if you wanted to deploy to Infura, you could uh, just define the host with the uh, with your with your key and and uh, making sure the protocol is HTTPS. And that will deploy to 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 Infura using the accounts that you you defined that you defined here. Now the other other improvements uh, include uh, the tests are are far faster. And I'll just run the first the uh, the the first test uh, that should take around eight seconds or so. Uh, and it takes that long because it needs to load the Solidity uh, compiler, which is uh, which is quite heavy. Uh, one one thing you can do uh, to to reduce this is to install the Embark C plugin. So this is a plugin you can find over over here, the Embark framework, Embark C. and this will use the command line version of uh, Solidity, of the Solidity compiler, which is far far faster. And so after I install it, I'll have to go to embark JSON, and I'll just add it here, embark source with empty parameters. 
And now if I run again the same test, it should be far faster. So yeah, I could see it took three seconds instead of, uh, instead of eight. So it makes quite a bit of, uh, of a difference. And the test itself now, they are, they are uh, well, we completely revamped the test. So uh, it's, it is a breaking change, but uh, we believe the test this way are much more uh, accessible and easy to work with. So first thing is that they're no longer available. The contracts are no longer available in the global context. Uh, context. Instead, you need to specifically require the contract that you have. You can you can uh, still configure the the contracts uh, just like you would in contracts JSON. And uh, the other thing is that all the functionality that's available in in the contracts configuration, you can use it in the test. So you could define deployments in case you want to connect the test to, a, to a, another node. And you can also define accounts. So for instance, if I put here the accounts, and I'll just put here a comma, and let's say I define here five accounts, then this should create, this should create uh, uh, five accounts that, uh, that are generated from this mnemonic with, uh, with five eater each. So I could just do here a, a, simple, a simple task. Let's say uh, it should have five accounts. And then the sync function. And then I've got the accounts. I'll wait. Uh, Web3 is available uh, still globally here. Uh, and then I'll do assert strict equal accounts length five. And let's see if I didn't do any mistake. Oops, I did a mistake. Uh, oh, it's being 10, I'm not sure why. Well, I'm probably doing a mistake here somewhere. Anyway, uh, the other thing is that the perils of live demos. Uh, you can also, if you want, you can also deploy the contract. So you can say I, it should deploy a new contract instance. And let's say, uh, I'll just gonna copy, paste this from another stream. And I, let's say I wanna await for the results. And I can assert the results would be 150. And again, is that, so you can do this sort of test, uh, which, so, so if you want, you can just take the, this contract object, even if you didn't deploy it in, 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 the, in the config, and it just did the, the deployment yourself as, as you wish. And you can see that it, uh, it worked, it, uh, it, we got the new value. So more information about the tests can be found in the, in the, in the Embark docs. Uh, there's a text testing section, and you can see several examples which uh, variables are available, how to configure accounts. So you can do other things too. You can, uh, you can specify a private key file, uh, you can specify uh, directly uh, just a private key in the, in the config. Uh, although you shouldn't do that in, in source control, uh, just a warning. Uh, you can also specify a, a, a deployment node in case you don't want to use the internal virtual machine uh, that counts, and you can and you can do also the deployment yourself of uh, individual contracts if you so so wish. And so more information can be found in the in the blog post by by Status. So that's it, and thank you.